<laughs> Focus, please. This completely creepy person was literally my professor at Evergreen. And this was his alter ego. It was a giant mask, um, really huge, super oversized, like 10 feet tall, really hard for Bruce to wear, but he would. His real name was Bruce Bailey, uh, is. And this is what he would wear on occasion. And this was a deviant, super psychopathic, sexual predator who was my teacher. And he would break into our uh, living quarters at Evergreen. He walked in on the shower of a roommate of mine, making him more like Alfred Hitchcock in Psycho than anything imaginable. And Evergreen really could care less that he had did these things. Um, he told me that I was an apple tree and that apple trees had to give their apples freely. He told me that I had to have sexual relations with him in order to get credit from him. <laughs> he was that bold and I'm sort of laughing now, but it's not funny. It was extremely traumatizing and the college defended him. I didn't even go to the college at first. I just sat in my room and cried and was completely grossed out by him. And um, we'll let that go on. This is, uh, this is Bruce. So you can see how scary that would be for an 18 year old girl to have somebody um, like this. He often wore this neck brace around his neck as well and would, I don't know, he would walk around the campus and put cotton in his, in his ears and uh, he was just a really, really, really creepy guy. And so uh, it's really hard for me to even talk about it because of the trauma of going through it. There were witnesses. Uh, there was actually even a prominent male witness who grew up next door to Jim Henson and he owned an airplane. We used to go flying up to Seattle in his, in his private jet and he had uh, witnessed um, Bruce Bailey asking him for condoms because he said he needed them for me. And this guy knew darn well that uh, I had absolutely no interest. By the way, we're still watching this. This is Bruce's big classic, by the way. It's called Quick Billy. <clears throat> but uh, we will get on to some other professors. We'll get back to him at another time uh, because there is definitely more to go over. But I just always get a little too creeped out and I, I just can't focus on him very long. Here's a little bonus person that we're going to add and this is Timothy O'Malley. And Timothy O'Malley was more sort of like a, a Ted Bundy, a Ted Bundy type. He was not um, on the official payroll of the college. <clears throat> he looks nothing at all like what he looked like either. He had long, wild, blonde, you know, blonde hair and a huge beard a very lionine person. He really looked like the Frito Lays guy that was in The Wizard of Oz. Uh, so this is very interesting. Um, he was really like the Jimmy Savile of campus, this mysterious figure. He wasn't really hired there, but he taught a class uh, called Love, and he said he was there for everyone to learn how to love each other. He um, had a lot of drugs, a lot of psychedelics. He had a duffel bag full of them. One night he even buried them in the in behind my house. He had like a huge amount and he just uh, dug a hole and buried them. So he was, I guess, the, the campus trickster. And he seemed to know a lot about what went on in, in the campus. He would... Um, you know, also showed that he had power over the people. I remember one day he picked me up 
uh, he like showed up in a, in, in a car. He never owned a car. He always had other people's cars. And he showed up one morning and said, I'm going to drive you to class. And he, you know, drove on the sidewalk and drove across the square and um, dropped me off at class. And anyone else who would have done that, he was right, would be arrested. You can't like drive on school sidewalks in like some random, you know, funky vehicle. You know, that's usually just only reserved for, you know, police emergencies. So it seems as if he did have some kind of weird, um, weird clout or pull there. Okay, now we're on to, this one is a, is a real favorite story. This is, this is Peter Bomer. And uh, this is the uh, story headline, Inside Evergreen Assassination Attempt of Peter Bomer. And here it says that the FBI, um, that the FBI had tried to assassinate Peter Bomer. So I guess that's a warning. If you're going to take Peter Bomer's class, you know, is the FBI going to maybe like remember and go, oh, wow, and... Uh, and show up again. Uh, so that's an interesting one. Um, Peter is a um, Marxist professor of critical theory and things like that. And I, I know him a little bit. He's a nice guy. But I found a video of somebody who really um, had it on the money for any way for how I well. this is the truth feel about, about Marxism. <laughs> Marx. I'm going to be leaning on one of the most influential books I've ever read, which is called Intellectuals, by one of my favorite historians, Paul Johnson. You could do worse than spend a weekend reading through modern times. But um, Paul has an interesting approach or theory about modern times, which he says, well, we used to go to priests for morality, and then these intellectuals came along and elbowed priests out of the way and said, we are the new moralists. And... Um, one of the things that can be quite helpful when dealing with a moralist is to say, well, what is that moralist like as a person? It's the thin person diet book principle, I guess you could say, in that you will never see a diet book written by an author who is obese. Uh, this is just basic reality. Uh, because if somebody puts forward a new moral theory or a new theory of dieting or nutrition, then the first thing that we want to say is, well, how's that working out for the person himself or herself? Right, so if somebody says it's really important to lose weight and I know how to do it and they're fat, then either it's not important to lose weight or they don't know how to do it or both. Now, if somebody writes a book and says, obviously, if you write a book about something, it's something you feel strongly about. So if you write a book about how to lose weight, obviously, you think that losing weight is important. And if you then don't think that losing weight is important, but you've written a book about it, that's kind of crazy, shows that you can't really think very well. Or if you think losing weight is important, and you say you know how to do it, but you are fat, then either you have applied your diet or you haven't. If you have applied your diet, but you're still fat, then you don't know how to lose weight. If you haven't applied your diet, then you're asking other people to be your guinea pig. You're asking other people to do that which you are unwilling to do yourself in something very essential where you claim deep knowledge. So it is not an ad hominem to reject a diet book with a fat author on the cover. It is... <laughs> Simply a recognition that life is short and we have to make decisions. And somebody who thinks it's a good idea to be fat and try and sell diet books is not somebody who thinks well enough that we're going to explore anything else <laughs> that they have to say. I mean, it could be true that the guy who shows up in scuba gear and a common Miranda uh, fruit hat uh, is going to be a wonderful salesperson, but who has time to try and figure that out? All we know is that somebody's showing up for a job interview in scuba gear, scuba gear and a fruit hat. So and we can, um, you, you can uh, definitely go to his site. Um, I have to go now, but uh, thank you so much for watching. You guys are really the best, and uh, take good care. Oh, shall we show our freaky, uh, creepy uh, 
Dr. Bish again here for you guys, or is that just too much here? You know, we will, uh, there. Oh, and I'm supposed to uh, also ask for you to subscribe. And um, thank you very much. You're the best. And hit the like button if you want to. Take good care. We'll find you more crazy evergreen professors. Just you wait.